All right. Now, here's one of those names you've heard if you've been in San Antonio for a while. Brantley Hightower, who is not just an architect, but a writer. And because he's an architect, maybe he could be your boss soon, some of you. Founded Highworks, that's a San Antonio architecture firm, after studying architecture at the University of Texas at Austin and Princeton University. He's taught at schools including UT Austin, Texas Tech University, and Trinity University. He produces The Works, that is an architecture podcast, and is a regular contributor to Texas Architect Magazine. And his first book, The Courthouses of Central Texas, was published earlier this year by the University of Texas Press. Please give a warm San Antonio welcome for Bradley Tower. Speaking in front of a large group of people is made considerably easier by the existence of a moat between you and the large group of speakers, as does the uh, uh, drinking of alcoholic beverages. So in a previous episode of Pecha Kucha, the author Andrew Porter gave a presentation about the process of writing his first book, a novel. And I thought it might be an interesting parallel to provide a similar talk this evening, but about the writing of my first book, a work of nonfiction called Courthouses of Central Texas. Now, like most projects, this one began by stealing some ideas from students. I taught a design studio at the University of Texas at Austin, and one of their precedent studies was a series of analysis drawings of courthouses in and around Austin. And it struck me that there was a lot of information here, a lot of good lessons that I personally could learn about how good buildings are built in this state. And it reminded me of a book I had when I was a child, and this gives you a bit of an insight into what kind of child I was. Uh, that was an index of all of the aircraft that were currently in production in the world. It gave a little bit of data, a little bit of uh, uh, photographs, some diagrams, and I thought this could be a really cool project to take on. Which was interesting because I was about to take on another important and large-scale project. And while it seems odd to take on these two simultaneously, one had a finite deadline, the other did not. And so if it took me two years to write the book, or 20, at the end of the day, it didn't matter. So I negotiated some terms with my wife that allowed me to leave town for a few hours on Saturday mornings to drive out to a distant courthouse, take some horizontal measurements, take a few photographs, and then return home to San Antonio and immediately begin to uh, translate those horizontal dimensions into vertical dimensions and draw in CAD a series of elevations and a series of plans that describe these buildings in objective detail. And what that allowed me to do was uh, objectively compare courthouses to one another. Normally they're spread apart several hundred miles from each other. But here you can directly compare the size of uh, the uh, Bear County Courthouse uh, and see that it is much bigger and much better, frankly, than most others in the state. And once you have 50 courthouses to compare to one another, suddenly you can see certain patterns emerge, both historically through time uh, and as well as observationally. So, for example, most courthouses don't have a tower or dome, but if you average all 50 profiles over one another, you end up with a definition that is remarkably similar to that one that is in your mind. <laughs> now, most of this work was done uh, on nights and in evenings after my daughter Sammy was asleep. Occasionally she would let me work on Saturdays while she happily played uh, beside me, but typically this occurred uh, on the margins of my life. But after about uh, four years, I figured I had amassed enough information that I could start to sell this idea to uh, publishers. So I sent a letter to Princeton Architectural uh, Press, and they immediately sent a letter back that said no. And then I sent another letter to the University of Texas Press, saying the same thing, and they said, yes, this sounds like fun. Let's create something beautiful together. And so we did. So with a goal now and a firm uh, grasp of where I was going, I started to photograph uh, the courthouses of Central Texas. I tried to do them uh, when it was overcast uh, and when the leaves were off the trees. Now, unfortunately, in Texas, that means I had to photograph them all in January and February, which is why Santa Claus is in most of the images I took of the courthouses of Central Texas. So when these two climactic conditions uh, combined with one another, I would often 
calling to work, say I was sick, and then immediately drive for 12 straight hours to get as many of these images as I possibly could. This one particular road trip took 12 hours and uh, was over 600 uh, miles long. Often I would travel alone, uh, but sometimes I would need uh, an assistant, and Sammy provided uh, that, that, that capacity, although she would quickly uh, become frustrated with her father uh, in an image that I'm sure will repeat itself as she grows closer uh, to her teenage years. Now, as important as ground-level photography was, aerial photography was incredibly important as well, for I was trying to get a better understanding of how these buildings related to their immediate urban context. And so I, of course, bought a drone, and I flew the drone around government buildings in concentrated centers of population. And so while pictures in the all are good, this was a book we were talking about, and so I also had to write a book. And so throughout this process, I was also crafting the narrative that would eventually become the text portion of this book. Now that existed in a very sort of ephemeral thing on the computer for a while until the end of 2012 when I had to print the thing out and suddenly it had pep. Suddenly it started to exist in the world. It was a good thing I met this deadline because I had another life event happen. Darcy was born in the spring of 2013 and Sammy uh, welcomed her to the family in really the only way Sammy could. So the as soon as I turned sort of this manuscript and these images over to UT Press, we started really turning things over to them. They, they helped with the layout, they're good at this sort of thing, they helped with the copy editing, um, and over the course of the next uh, year or so, slowly began to craft this thing and make it more real. Now, the only thing I saw were PDF images, so it remained this sort of fake thing in a way, until I got invited to uh, speak on the source at Texas Public Radio. David Martin Davies is the host, and here in a moment, and for the first time I got to physically hold a copy of this and sort of see the end of this process. But it wasn't really the end of the process, because really no process of writing a book is complete until you get your first negative review. And in this case, a gentleman from Houston didn't think the book was worth writing. He said that if courthouses don't embody uh, repeatable universal design values able to transcend their original context, then why should an architect working today bother studying them? It's a good question, a little dickish, but <laughs> at the end of the day, I wasn't writing the book for him. I was writing it for people who feel you don't need a master's degree to understand and appreciate architecture. I wrote it for people like you, people who see beauty in the world and want to understand how to make it better, how to repeat it. And of course, I wrote it for Sammy, who at the end of the day was who the book was dedicated to. Thank you. That was great, and thank you, first of all. I now realize what my interviewing technique is. I've never heard the word before, though, dickish. Those kinds of questions. It's one of those words that has many forms, and it's good to use some of those. I, let's, I, let's, I feel dickish right now. Okay, so, if anybody keeps that on videotape, you're dead, all right? Uh, first of all, um, why, why courthouses? I mean, Courthouses, I, so I'm always interested when good architecture happens in places you wouldn't necessarily expect it. Like New York, it's easy. Paris, sure. But in uh, LaGrange, Texas, it's kind of shocking that you find something as cool as you do in LaGrange. And so as an architect, I was interested in figuring out why these buildings, which at the end of the day are multi-use government buildings, why we love these so in a state that, last time I checked, was kind of still red. And so the idea of celebrating government in Texas? That's really interesting. And now R's here. It's a something Romanesque 1890. Uh, Richardsonian Romanesque, which interestingly enough uh, was a style that originated in southern France and then was adopted by a Boston architect who never built anything in Texas. The closest he got was Chicago. And it became a style that was popular in uh, Texas for courthouses uh, and towards the last decades of the, the 19th century, mainly because it was kind of easy to build. The stonework is very rough. You don't need uh, fine masons to create smooth stone. Uh, so it was a language that was very adaptable and relatively easy to build. Yeah, how about this one here? I don't know if you've been in there since they redid it, and the new, uh, the new big two-story uh, courtroom court 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 that looks kind of like it was from, uh, what's the Atticus Finch movie? You know what I'm saying? Uh, Kill Kill Hunt. Hunt. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Which is your favorite courthouse of all the ones you've seen? The answer to that question is always the county that I'm currently standing in. Um, and so... Really? Do you think you'd have hecklers if you said, you know, Blanco? I don't know. Well, I do have a moat protecting me from them, so frankly, I can say anything I want. Um, you know, each, each one has a very compelling and very interesting story. And, and for me, visiting all of these, I mean, I always remember uh, the Johnson County Courthouse. That was the first one I took Sammy on. Uh, I'll remember the Hill County Courthouse. It was sort of the last one I photographed. And I got there right at dusk uh, when sort of the magic hour, that last little bit of sunlight sort of illuminated the tower for miles around. It's amazing. Um, but I'm from San Antonio, so the Bear County Courthouse. Really and, and a last good question or two. Uh, drones. Do you have a nice drone where you use like a GoPro or? Yes, uh, it was, so, so for years I tried to find a, a pilot who would uh, fly me uh, to photograph these courthouses, but um, that's really expensive apparently. Um, so while that price stayed constant, the price of drones fell. And it finally came to a point where I could kind of rationalize it. Um, and uh, so legally it's a little dubious at this point. Um, <laughs> But I would pack the drone in the back of my car, drive up early on a Sunday morning, open up the truck, fly up the drone, fly it back, and be done. But um, I decided to take the approach of asking for forgiveness rather than permission. Did you ever come close to getting I never came close to getting caught. A few people came up and asked, what are you doing? And I would tell them and let them fly it and uh, get in my car. Hopefully they'll buy a book. Do you still use it? I do. I do. I actually find it's been very useful in my architectural practice. Um, you know, Google Earth is great. Uh, but if you need something a little bit more detailed um, or need to look in someone's bedroom, it's great to have that uh, capacity uh, sort of built into your operation. Uh, okay. Um, there's something else I was going to ask you, and I got uh, just thrown off there just a minute. Uh, what's the next book? Well, uh, depending on how this one sells, I would love to do a courthouses of Western Texas, a courthouse of Eastern Texas. As you saw, I now have two assistants uh, to help with that. Uh, we don't have that four. Four. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Brantley Hightower. Thank you very much. That was awesome. And all learned a new word. Dickish. I hope there are not a lot of kids here. Okay.